over $100 million in unclaimed money goes on award each year because students don't know it exists. So Scholarly solves that problem by leveraging technology to be like a, um, a dating app for money and students, which is great, right? <laughs> Around 2008, I was, that was when I was preparing to go to college. My mom lost her job because of the recession. I basically had good grades, I had high test scores, I started on profs, I was kind of that type A student, like probably a lot of people you know are. But you know, colleges weren't given a lot of aid, so I had to find money. So I desperately went and applied for as many scholarships as possible, and it took me months to find them. I didn't have access to the internet. I had to even uh, you apply for some essays on my cell phone. I literally like sit back in my bed and like, press submit on like 600 word essays typing them from my phone. The hard work ended up paying off. Um, I ended up winning over a million dollars in scholarships. Um, I didn't do that by design. I just applied for literally so many that, um, that you know, I ended up getting a lot of them. And with that, I was like suddenly able to go to college. After making that money, I kind of went on this crusade of just trying to help other people do the same. And I realized that people of different ethnic, economic backgrounds are all facing these issues. I went to Drexel, so I had you know friends who didn't have necessarily the same background, but who's still facing this issue. And the biggest part about getting the money is finding it. That's really why, ultimately, why I started Scholarly because. It was this idea is that there's all this money looking for students, students looking for the money, and they can't find each other. When I first started Scholarly, it was right kind of at the peak when everything was transitioning to mobile. And the first reaction we got was initially, why not just make it a website? Why not make it a website? And you know, and that was kind of what a lot of people are saying with a lot of apps. Like, I don't want to do everything on my phone. And then the kind of um, this kind of like renaissance of like mobile started to happen. Whereas that it was great that it was mobile because one, we actually designed the original app where kids didn't even have to use the internet to search because I thought of myself when I was like didn't have access to the internet at home. Like, how can we make sure like low income students can be able to kind of use the platform? and be able to use it where they go. Or if a student doesn't have access to a computer at home, can they search for scholarships, then go to their computer at a library or at school and apply for them? We are a technology platform, so the same way we can match students with scholarships, we can start to match them with internships. We can start to match them with other resources. And we can even say, and there are other ways to reduce college costs by ensuring that students have access to the most affordable books, the most affordable resources, and there's business models around that, right? So I think that leveraging Scholar as a platform to match students with students and, um, and eventually expanding that market beyond students to match people with other opportunities using the same technology we use to do that is kind of going to be a core piece of that platform, like, which is why we patented that um, search engine to be able to kind of think about that and do that um, in a compelling way. Because there's a lot of, there are lots of things students don't know about and it, I think it's important now that we have this critical mass of users and growing, how do we leverage that to be able to kind of put more resources in front of those students to from a business perspective, continue to engage our users, but from an impact perspective, continue to give them access to opportunities they may not know otherwise.